Hello there, Richard Hurstwood, Hurstwood Training, and what I want to do is show you how to connect your iPads to a projector, or in fact a TV. In the past, in sensory studios, we've had big projection systems, computer systems running it, all sorts of stuff. But if you want to see why you want to connect your iPad to a projector, have a look at the iPad fish tank video that I've got on YouTube. So, you can project like this onto the wall absolutely anywhere. So here's how to do it. Right, the first thing you need to know is that this only works with an iPad 2 or a new iPad, which may be an iPad 3. I'm going to use this with a Hitachi projector. You could use it with any projector in your classroom, any data projector or PowerPoint projector. This happens to be a lovely ultra short throw, which is really nice. I'm going to show you three ways to connect, but here's the easiest way and the way that you'll be best with. A VGA cable and one of the VGA adapters from Apple. This is the simplest way to do it. Now, this VGA cable is the one that you'd normally plug into the side of your computer when you're in the classroom. Exactly the same as that. Now, you're also going to need an Apple VGA adapter to connect it up. You can buy this online from the Apple Store or go to the shop itself. You might find cheap coppers available, but I like the Apple so ones. So there's the end that plugs into the VGA, and that is the end that plugs into the iPad itself. Dead easy. So let's take our cable and just plug it into the end there, upside down. It only goes one way, so don't force this one, and uh, just screw the screws in there so it's a nice tight fit. Right, so that's the Apple end done. Have a look at your data projector and look for some blue sockets. They're your VGA sockets. One on the left here is number one. Come on, come on, point to it, Richard. There it is. And the one on the right is number two. So you want to locate those on your projector. Now what you do is you take your VGA cable, and in this case I'm going to plug it into number one just there. Make sure it goes the right way up. It only goes one way and just screw the two screws in and you're just about ready for off. Right, so we're just about there. What we need to do now is plug in the Apple adapter into what would be... Oh, it wants me password. There you go. There we go. Plug the iPad adapter into what would be the charging socket of the iPad just below the home button right there. In it goes. And now it should be that when we switch it on, it actually fires off. So, let's just review what we've done. We've taken a VGA cable and we've plugged it into the back of your data projector. There you go, through the cable there, and then we're now connecting that cable to the iPad itself with the VGA adapter. So it should be that we're ready to go. But it might not work first time, but let's have a look. We'll fire this one up and see what happens. As you'll see, I'm professionally projecting onto me dining room wall. <laughs> it was a bit of a rush. Here we go, switch on the iPad, and with a bit of luck... Oh, it's automatically connected. Wow, that was so simple. But it doesn't always work as easy as that. Try it. You may need to get the remote for your data projector, or in fact for your TV, and just press computer just to get it to talk to the right socket. Keep pressing the computer button, or it could be called the source button. It varies, but basically you're asking it to talk to the little ports at the back of the data projector, and it'll find the signal in the end. So, good luck with that one. So now whatever appears on your iPad screen will appear on the wall through your data projector. Brilliant. It's called mirroring. Now any sounds you make will actually come out of the iPad itself. This is music sparkles by the way. So if you want a bigger sound, what you need to do, little mini jack to mini jack lead. That's it there. This is the same socket as your headphones except it's one jack on one end and one on the other. So if I plug it into the headphone socket right there in this case, I'll plug it into my Wowie, and now my phone. And the nice thing is, you can also feed it through the Wowie. So that's going to be really nice. Now, there is one other thing, and that is if you already have computer speakers or anything like that, then you can probably plug them straight into the headphone socket of your iPad, and you'll get great sound from those. So plug your computer speakers in. You'll find they're fantastic. On the courses, I plug in a massive big Bose system into the iPad, and it sounds great. 
Right, now there's another way to connect to a projector if you don't want to use VGA. That's HDMI. And this is often the way that we're connecting to televisions. So, the HDMI connection, you won't find this on all data projectors, it's mainly on the newer ones. Different leads, different way of connecting. Here goes. You need an HDMI cable. They're often a lot smaller and lighter than VGA cables, and the plugs are a lot easier. And you need an Apple HDMI adapter. Yes, another adapter needed to connect uh, your iPad to the projector via HDMI. So the process is very much like connecting a VGA. What you do first of all is take your HDMI cable, and by the way, the big the cables are smaller. You can often go more distance. You know, I can have a, a quite an easily operate a five meter HDMI cable, whereas a VGA is a lot heavier. So here we go. Plug it into the back of my data projector, or into the back of your television, or even a plasma screen with HDMI plug the other end into the Apple adapter there and then take the adapter and plug it into the bottom of the iPad the same place that we plugged in the VGA adapter that's the power socket at the bottom next to the home button so we should be squids in this should work absolutely fine and you'll find the picture is great it's really nice through HDMI now occasionally you'll get this message, this accessory is not supported. Well, I bought it from Apple, and actually it is, and it does work absolutely fine. So I tend to OK that and ignore it. So there you go. There's the HDMI adapter connected up, and we should be ready for off. So what we need to do is source it. Take your remote, and you see it says computer on the top, or it may say source. Press that once. And then let's have a quick look at the screen. Here we go. There we are. And computer in. That's a VGA, so it's not going to talk to that. Press it again. Computer 2. That's VGA. It's not going to talk to that. So let's press it again, and hopefully it'll go HDMI detecting and brilliant stuff. We're up. Haha. <laughs> Now, if you're using this HDMI to connect your iPad to a TV screen, a monitor, or a, a plasma screen, let's say, then this little bit is fine, because what HDMI does, it also takes over the sound. So you'll no longer get sound coming out of your iPad. It will actually come out of the TV. If you're connecting a projector via HDMI, if your projector doesn't have speakers, you're not going to have sound. So uh, make sure before you go down the line of HDMI that you are actually going to get sound because if you're using apps like this one and you don't have the sound, it's really not good at all. So HDMI connection, a lot tidier, a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. But because of the complexities with the sound, I often use VGA. Ah, but there is one other way to connect which really might be interesting for some of us. Now, of course, one of the most effective ways to connect is through Apple TV, because this means that your iPad will connect wirelessly. And Apple TV is about £100 from the Apple Store, but it does do away with all leads and everything else. Dead easy to do. It only works by HDMI, so VGA cables are not going to be used here at all. So it's pretty easy once you've done it the first time. Let me show you. Take an Apple TV, and then the first thing to do is plug it up to the mains. There you go, plug the mains cable in. Uh, so this is going to need to be near a socket. Take your HDMI lead, which I described in the last part of the video when we were connecting the iPad via the HDMI, it's the same lead. You plug the other end of that lead into the back of your projector, or just look for the HDMI socket, or in a television, it's going to be in the back somewhere near the scarts and those kinds of things. Plug it up to there, and then we should, there it goes, just get it in there, Richard, that's it, in it goes, and then we're just about ready to go. So, to recap, here we go, loads of cables plugged into the mains, the Apple TV, and then the HDMI cable, that one there, that one is going to my projector, which is my Hitachi, right there, or it could be your television and then we're nearly good to go I did say nearly now if this is the first time you've switched it on you're gonna see this setting date and time but it will also if I just move my camera up you will see that it says 
The date and time can't be set. Press menu and check your network settings. So, the Apple TV needs to be connected to a wireless network. So what I'm going to do is press menu and you'll see that comes up. Now, we need to get to the settings to set up the wireless network. Your Apple TV isn't connected to a network. To check your network settings, choose settings, general, then select network. So, right, and then we need to go into settings. We need to go general. So, what we need to do is take our little remote, our Apple remote, press right again, and that will take us into the network settings. There you go, whiz it down. And then from there, you can configure your Wi Fi. You'll need your Wi Fi password, uh, which is a bit of a pain. And putting it in is with that little remote isn't the easiest, but nevertheless, once you've set it up once, it'll remember it. And even if you unplug it, it'll be fine. So set that up and then we're away. Right, the next bit. Your Apple TV and your iPad must be connected to the same wireless network. Then all you do is double tap the home button, swipe it to the right and look, a new menu will have appeared in your music player. That one. All you do, press Apple TV. If mirroring is not switched on, switch it on and then it will magically appear on the screen working via wireless. There you go, no leads plugged in at all and my iPad is connected. Fantastic. Now if you don't have a wireless network or like me you're traveling around all over the place and you need to create your own wireless network then try this. This is a Seagate GoFlex satellite. It's a hard drive. This is uh, 500 gigs, half a terabyte. Uh, this is wireless. In other words, it sets up its own little Wi-Fi. It means that if I put lots and lots of films on here, documents, things like that, I can actually connect my iPad to this wirelessly through its own little Wi-Fi network. And then I can ex access loads and loads more information. Now, the great thing about the Seagate is you can actually connect your Apple TV wirelessly to this drive and then connect your iPad wirelessly to this drive and create your own little iPad wireless network and then that works just the same as a Wi-Fi that you might have in school but actually it's quite nice because it's a private Wi-Fi and uh, you can connect a few iPods to it uh, sorry a few iPads to it as well I think it's a maximum of four that you can connect which is great so there you have it, three different ways to connect your iPad to your projector screen, plasma screen or television. VGA is the most reliable way I've found and you get a slightly bigger picture. Uh, HDMI is really nice and clear, it's lovely. The problem with HDMI connection is that it takes over your sound. Apple TV remote wireless is wonderful when we want to move the iPad away from the front of the class and get it in amongst the kids but it does sometimes tend to be a little bit laggy. If you have a an app running that has a lot of movement, sometimes even the new Apple TV, which I was using there, uh, it doesn't keep up and it can get a little bit staggery. So each way of connecting has its own little problems and sometimes I do question why do you want to connect the iPad to a big screen because surely the learning is best when it's right in front of the child but for those of you who do who you want to connect it up to your screen for doing stories and things like that because it's great letting watch sorry letting whole groups see something that we've created it's marvelous for that those are probably the best ways to do it so there you go that's it how to connect your ipad to a screen don't forget lots more sensory information at multi-sensory-room.co.uk facebook if you're on facebook get us at hurstwood training do a like for that and of course we're on the twitter feed as well twitter is at hurstwood t and i post normally a few times a day unless we're actually on holiday and if you came to this video from the website the youtube channel is 
Richard Age 53. And there's lots of videos, not just about iPads, but all kinds of sensory related things up there. So here's all the contact details again. So don't forget, multi sensory training of all different kinds from Hurstwood Training. If you want us to come to your place, get in touch. If it's sensory, it's Hurstwood Training. Thank you.